Hello, everyone, and welcome back. It is Deanna, and I am once again joined by Corey Maddox. Hi, Corey. How are you? Hey there. As you probably know by now, uh, Corey is our dual diagnosis IOP coordinator, um, and uh, he's back on to, to discuss kind of a different topic um, than, than what you've been discussing in our past videos, Corey. Um, but we have a, a question for you, and that is right now, um, with everything going on with COVID-19 and the stay-at-home order extended and are really a, a lot of unknowns. Um, my question for you is, how would you recommend somebody cope with feelings of anger? Yeah, I, I think in my therapy sessions lately, um, it's been like a, a recurring theme that a lot of people are getting more frustrated and more angry these days. And it's kind of a natural progression. A lot of times when people are anxious or worried, over time that you can just start feeling more irritable because you're tired of feeling that way. And we don't have, a, we have, we still have more questions than answers right now. So I think a lot of people are getting more irritable and more frustrated. Uh, cabin fever is definitely playing a role of people kind of stuck in their homes. Um, so what we've been talking about in therapy is it's really important not to try and reinforce that anger. We talk about the difference between doing something that's therapeutic, which means you improve your feelings and your mood that you're in, and then, and then doing something that's cathartic, which is doing something that matches the mood that you're already in. And I've been finding in my group therapies and individually that people are doing a lot of cathartic things, meaning when they're sad, they listen to sad music. When they're angry, they hit a punching bag. When they're you know anxious, they're watching more of these pandemic movies on Netflix and things like, and they're just doing things that feels relatable so we kind of seek it out but it's also reinforcing our fear and our anxiety and our and then that turns into irritability after we hold it for so long so we've been telling people to to choose something that's far more positive it's kind of going against the grain and, and when you're sad you know doing something that's a lot like listening to the happier songs on your playlists or on what is it, spotify or whatever you have um we've been having people try to do more indoor exercises which we've mentioned in previous videos um, People feel like hitting a punching bag is therapeutic, but there's a lot of research that shows that, that actually just makes us more irritable and more frustrated over time because a lot of people end up like hurting their hands and then they're just mad about that. Um, so doing things that are, are, are kind of against the grain, um, getting outdoors more as the weather changes and still social distancing, but being outside I think will help. Getting some sunshine will help. Um, and I know a lot of people are itching to get back to work. Um, we, we just have to think long-term, not short-term, and as hard as that is, I know there's a lot of people that need to get back to work and they're really frustrated that they can't. Um, but we have to keep in mind, we don't want to rush people back to work just to get a lot of people more sick. Um, so we, we have to play the long-term game here and, and kind of ride this out together. Absolutely. And um, what do you recommend, um, you know, we see a, a lot more people are using social media apps like Facebook. And um, let's be honest, I think both you and I can agree that even for personal use, um, I find myself getting frustrated with certain posts and irritated. Um, what would you recommend for, um, you know, is it still gonna be similar for those, those feelings of anger when you're using a social media site or, or what might you suggest for something like that? Yeah, with our patients, we've actually been talking to them about limiting their social media usage lately because it's become far less about, uh, you know, talking with others and sharing positive things and more so just who's going to post like the latest news story or some political development or, or something that's kind of controversial. Uh, there's always going to be people that, that disagree with information. There's always going to be people that agree with information. I've seen everything on, on social media that's to the far left, to the far right, to in between, and it, people are getting more and more frustrated. I think people are just looking for answers. And I think that we just have to call it like it is and accept that we don't really have a solution for this right now. So people are trying to soothe themselves by, by seeking an answer that doesn't exactly exist uh, at the moment. But I, I, hopefully we're getting closer. I think we have to put our trust in, in the medical professionals and, and, and the scientists who are researching for a cure or a vaccine. And our job is to do what we can control, which is, is helping ourselves stay as safe as possible um, and I think that we have a, a lot of information that's useful about social distancing and how to, and how to help keep ourselves healthy. Um, and, and social media has just become kind of more controversial these days with people posting things and getting in arguments and it's just not, it's just not healthy. Right. Um, yeah. I, 
So, you know, some people look at it with like a gain frame, some people with a loss frame. And what that means is some people will see the glass half full, some people will, will see that the glass is half empty, and then they'll argue about who's right. And at the end of the day, like they're both right. The glass is half full and it is half empty and no, neither party is going to walk away changing the other person's mind. Um, and, and I think it's, it's just important to focus on what we can control, what we do know, and that's how to keep ourselves safe and clean during these times. And, uh, you know, social media, we can get back on that once uh, we're able to be social again anyway. Absolutely. That, that's great advice. Thank you so very much. It's always a pleasure to speak with you. Um, can't thank you enough for joining us again. Sure. Um, if you have any questions for Corey or any of his colleagues, um, please certainly reach out. Um, our message is, of course, and as always, um, if you do need help, please contact a mental health professional. Many have mobilized and are offering telehealth services that are going to look exactly like what Corey and I are utilizing right now. Um, but of course, Premier Behavioral Health is out there for you as well, and you can reach us at 440 2660770. Thank you again very much, Corey. It's nice to see you. Yeah, thank you. All right, bye bye.